Hello, just as we promised, we keep our word like God does. Welcome back to MyBibleRegistration.com. I'm Minister Love, joined again with my partner and student teacher, Sister Sandy, who's representing Source Outreach Ministries on today. And we also have BlackCoopMinistries.com as well. You can visit us at those websites. But today we got another lesson on MyBibleRegistration.com. And we're asking the question all year long, why should I study my Bible? Sister Sandy, share with the audience today, what's a good reason that we should be studying our Bible today? Oh, today's a good one. Mm -hmm. I am appointed by God. So stay tuned in this lesson. Woo! When it's over, you can also do the same. If you would yes. like to get appointed by God, stay tuned. Oh my God. <laughs> Sandy, what did you think when you saw that word? Because that's going to be the key word today, appointed. What does that mean to you, appointed? And it's, it's enough oh. to know to be appointed, but to be appointed by God? What does that right. mean to you? It's an honor. It's an honor, yes. you know, to be appointed by God. We're six years ago, so almost seven years ago, I was woke up at three in the morning and, and God told me he wanted me to create a website. And, and, mm -hmm. and it's just, has been a snowball rolling down the hill for over seven years with Minister Love and I, and just wondrous, wonderful things that we have been able to accomplish uh, with the help of the Holy Spirit. And, mm -hmm. and to be appointed by God is, 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 is um, it's so humbling and it's so bringing you down to where you need to be to do this work because you need to be really down here to be humble and and loving and, and get off you know the ego and all that other stuff that you probably had and i mean like in, in the world yeah you could get appointed you could be picked out of a whole bunch of folks to be a boss a manager mm -hmm. but but to be appointed by mm -hmm. the almighty god to do something for him mm -hmm. is priceless it is, isn't it? It okay. is. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, to be appointed, as, that's as if God has all billions of people. Yeah. There's a billion people that he could choose from. Right. And God looks through all of those people, like our backdrop yeah. there with the, with the water, with the ocean here, with the, uh, with the bridge in the backdrop there. God looked out upon the earth and at all of these people, God said, you know what? I'm going to appoint BlackWhoMinistries.com. I'm going to appoint SourceOutReachMinistries.com. I'm going to appoint, appoint MyBibleRegistration.com for a reason, for a purpose, just like he appointed Moses. He appointed uh, Noah. He appointed Joseph. He appointed so many people in the Bible, David. So we're no different. God has a purpose for everybody in the time that you are born in. When you are born, let's say you were born in the, in the 1900s, you got a purpose for that time. Okay, somebody born in the 2000s, you got a purpose for that time. You've been appointed to do something in that time frame. And what an honor, like you said, Sandy, I like that word. What an honor to be appointed by God. I know man can appoint me to do this task. Oh, let me appoint Minister Love. She can do the spreadsheet. Or let me appoint Sandy. She can create a website. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good, you know. But to be appointed by God to do something? Wow. To do that website, to do that teaching, it was God that appointed you to do that. It was God that appointed me to do what I'm doing. And it is God that appointed you, audience, to do what you do. If you realize what you're doing is for his glory and not your own right. when you get the appointment. So, uh, so Jeremiah chapter 1, and we was going to look at what, verse 10? Right. Yeah. Jeremiah chapter one, verse 10. And it reads, see, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Right wow. there, God is talking to Jeremiah and he's telling, he didn't use the word appoint. He used the phrase set thee. That's the same thing as appointing someone mm -hmm. to do something, isn't it? And right. he's, he's letting Jeremiah know, I've, this day I've set you over the nations and over the kingdoms. And what did he appoint Jeremiah to do? To root out, to root out and to pull down, to destroy and throw down what? Corruption, 
them pagan gods that the Jews were serving, uh, them uh, uh, Egyptian gods, Assyrian gods, Babylonian gods, any of them gods they were ser serving. But Jeremiah was appointed to throw all of that out, to throw it down. So the nation can be what rebuild and to be reestablished or replanted. Talk about being appointed, Jeremiah. We know about Isaiah and Ezekiel and them. They were all appointed. But here we're reading how Jeremiah was appointed as well. Whew, wow. Interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. So if, if you've been called by God and he appointed you, he, he didn't just appoint you and you get there and say, Lord, what am I going to do? He already know what you're going to do. He knew what you was going to do when he appointed you to do what you're doing. You ain't got to get up there and wonder, oh, what do I do now? What do I do? He, he already done told you what to do. Just do it. Right. That's the thing. Just do it. So, uh, you know what gets me with Christians? I don't know what to do. Oh, yeah. I just don't know what God want me to do. I'm going to take it to the Lord and pray. You said that 30 years ago. <laughs> you said that 10 months ago. And you still don't know what God wants you to do. You know what he you you know what he wants you to do. You just won't do it. Right. He's appointed you, but you just don't you don't want to do it. Like uh, Jonah with Nineveh, he appointed Jonah. Say, hey, go to Nineveh. Jonah didn't want to do it and didn't go until God had to uh, make him go. What? Yeah. See, people know what to do. They just they're lazy, right. and because it's not it's not it's not glamorous so to speak it, it, they're not on the stage so to speak you're not supposed to be on the stage god is on the stage not yet and people don't want to work for god because they ain't gonna get all the credit right are you seeing this that's true that's right let's go to the next scripture genesis chapter four talking about appointed that's the key word today genesis four Sandy, read for us and audience, follow with us, Genesis 4, verse 25. Okay. And Adam knew his, his wife again, and she bare a son, and called his name Seth. For God said, she hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain killed. So, yeah. So, so what's the key word today? Oh, Appointed. And what's going on here, Sandy? Um, God, God was uh, merciful on her. It showed her grace because mm -hmm. her son was killed by Cain, who was evil. And so he appointed her the opportunity to have another child, mm -hmm. another seed. And so his name was Seth. Mm -hmm. And so God, you know, saw her grieving and saw what had happened. And he gave, he appointed her. To, it's not necessarily to appoint you to do a path. Sometimes he might appoint you that he grants you another child, or he might appoint you something else, you know, that you might become a minister, you might become a mm -hmm. teacher, you might become an evangelist, you might become a, a ministry that goes through other countries. There's, there's a lot of stuff that, that God might appoint you to do, or he might appoint you just to go out and help the homeless people, you know, take, um, your money, some of your money every payday and go out and help somebody. You know, it could be simple. It doesn't have to be elaborate where you go become a apostle or a priest or something. It could be just as simple as helping your community. Um, like they say, um, adopt a street, adopt mm -hmm. a community. You know, you just go out every week with a group of people and you help people. Mm -hmm. And it's as simple as that, you know, mm -hmm. and who doesn't have time to do that? And who doesn't have time to take maybe 20 bucks out of your money mm. every month. And then you put your 20 bucks and she puts her 20 bucks. And before you know, you've got 500 bucks and you could feed a whole bunch of people. Mm -hmm. you know? so, yeah, that's yeah. true. That's true. I, I just want to add to what you said there with uh, Eve in this scripture, in this story, what's going on here. So she had these two boys and we know Cain killed his brother, right. but God had a purpose, didn't he? Mm -hmm. God had to, Eve needed another son because Cain was on the evil side. So God had a purpose to, what did he do? Not just that he got Eve pregnant again, but he appointed Seth to be in Eve's <laughs> womb. Yeah. Seth was an appointment by God. He yeah. appointed Seth to be in Eve's womb to come through her. And because Seth was the one that opened up the line for Jesus to come through. Jesus couldn't come through Cain line.
line. He wasn't appointed for Jesus to come through. Jesus had to come through the Seth line. That's why Seth was appointed in his mama's womb. Because Jesus now, his appointment was going to come through Seth. Mm -hmm. That goodly seed. Wow. Talk about God can God will appoint you before you even get in your mama's womb. He already knew what you was gonna do before you before you knew who your parents was gonna be. What? Okay. Wow. And I just wanted to share too. You could go to um, what's that in Blaku Jesus genealogy. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, and it's and it's nothing but appointments. <laughs> oh, that's in good. That line, Very the line good. Of Jesus. Yes. Okay? Yes. People that, that were appointed to make something happen uh -huh. so that the path of Jesus could come. Yes. And it's a great, great study. And I recommend you to go there and study that too. That's yeah. good, Sandy. Thank you for bringing that up. Because everyone in Jesus' genealogy, they were all appointed to bring forth Jesus as we know him today. Good point. Thank you. Okay. All right, then. Hey, listen, I think we got one more scripture on this lesson, I believe. Yeah. And we're going to go to Luke, Luke 22. Luke 22. Mm, and we're going to read 28 and 29. Sandy, read that and close us out with your thoughts on this scripture, okay? Okay. Luke 22. All right. 22 and 29. All right. 29. And it reads 28 and 29, Sandy. Yea, are they which have continued with me in my temptations. And I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father hath appointed unto me. And this is Jesus talking. Uh huh. And um, it's saying that you that have continued with me during all the temptations of this world and this life. And then he says, but you do this. I appoint to you a kingdom as my father has appointed to me. So he's not greedy. He's willing to share yes. the appointment that he's receiving from his father. Mm -hmm. But what he did, he went and died on the cross for us. Mm -hmm. okay? That was his major appointment mm -hmm. that he had to do in this life. And if we go with him and through all the trials and tribulations, uh, good and bad, ugly, whatever, we also can be appointed the same kingdom that his father is giving him. That is unbelievable. That's amazing, isn't it? That's unbelievable. So he's already got it on his calendar. Mm -hmm. He's already set it up. He has already appointed a kingdom for us mm -hmm. because his, like you just said, his daddy set him up with an appointment. He appointed him a kingdom and we get that same privilege. Wow. Talk about being appointed. Okay. We've seen people appointed. We've seen a kingdom has been appointed. This is why I study my Bible. Right. You just find out all that you could have. You know, what book can you read to find out what you can have if you do these things? If you study it. There isn't any. Mm -mm. <laughs> there isn't any. Mm -mm. Yeah. All you got to do is study this book and yeah. you'll, see, you'll see yourself in it. You, right. we're not just looking at Moses and Sarah and Noah now, but we're looking at the Carols and the Barbers and the Johns and the Sue. Everybody is a character in this book because right. there's nothing that Sarah and them did that I ain't did too or went through right. myself. We all have that opportunity to be that's part right. of this story that's a never ending story until God says it is. Exactly. And so why not be in this Bible as mm -hmm. part of the story than in some fiction or lie or falseness Mm -hmm. and wickedness that has is meaningless exactly at least when i die i can say wow i yeah. serve god i yeah. serve god i woke up and got smart and mm -hmm. i serve god i yeah. had enough time that i could serve him yes wow Ooh. hey listen we gotta amazing. cut we gotta cut it right there this is so it. good yeah. i know it's so good story. <laughs> Audience, thank you for joining Sister Sandy and I right here at MyBibleRegistration.com. You don't want to miss next week's lesson either. These we're giving you some good, we're giving you 42 reasons on why you should study your Bible. Stop going and looking for people to feed you, feed you, feed you, feed yourself. You're a grown up. Open up the Bible, read it for yourself, and let God speak to you, and he'll show you some stuff that you ain't never seen before. All right, then. I'm Minnesota with Sister Sandy. God bless you all. 
this time next week. Amen. Amen. All right. All right.